Hi, my name is Valerie. I'm currently a second year dental student at Oregon Health and Science University. I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, and I attended Oregon State University for undergrad, where I majored in biohealth sciences with a minor in chemistry, and I graduated in 2020. I feel like college was one of my most memorable experiences just because it was the first time where I got to experience what it's like to live on my own. And so I tried to make the most out of it. I was involved in a few clubs while attending OSU. Um, I was involved in the Asian Pacific American Student Union. Um, I was part of the pre-dental club. I was a microbi microbiology TA. Um, but I was mainly involved in the Vietnamese Student Association where I held multiple leadership roles um, such as event coordinator, media team photo lead, and junior advisor. Um, a fun fact about myself is that I can play four instruments. I can play the piano, guitar, ukulele, and this Vietnamese instrument called the zither. And I actually have some original music that can be found on streaming platforms such as YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And I actually wrote a song um, about one of my dental school interviews and they had me sing it in front of the interviewers. So that was pretty interesting. <laughs> I've always had an interest in the medical fields. Maybe it was my Asian parents subconsciously influencing me to become a doctor, but I truly felt like a career in medicine was such a rewarding career. Um, knowing that you have such a large impact on someone's life and giving them hope made me really interested in the field. So I began volunteering at the hospital while I was in high school. Um, one aspect of medicine that I really enjoyed was the patient interactions and the connections that I made, but there was a part of it that I felt was missing and that dentistry fulfilled, and that was using my hands. Growing up playing instruments, singing, and making music, I felt like dentistry was really the perfect blend of art and science. Um, so senior year of high school, I was required to shadow uh, a profession, and so I chose to shadow at a dental office. Um, and during my time there, I got to make my own bleaching trays. Although in retrospect, it's something very small and easy to do at the time, I thought it was so cool getting to change someone's smile and to make them feel more confident with themselves. <laughs> So how I studied for the DAT was mainly through um, the DAT boot camp, and I used the 10-week schedule, but I did modify it to fit my studying habits and needs. Um, I felt like the 10-week schedule was a little fast-paced for how I would study, so I did spend an extra day or two on certain topics that I was struggling with. Um, I also supplemented with the DAT destroyer questions, um, I began studying for the DAT the summer of my junior year, so I started studying right after I got out of school in June, and then I allocated three months of summer to study, and I took the DAT at the beginning of September. Um, I would definitely recommend allowing enough time to take the practice exams that DAT Bootcamp offers. Um, for me, it was a good way to gauge how you would perform on the actual exam because the format of it is similar to what the actual exam looks like and um, the practice exams on DAT boot camp were a bit more challenging than what the actual exam was in my opinion. I think this is a difficult question to answer just because you're never going to really know what makes you stand out as an applicant, but I think one thing that makes me different from many of the applicants was the fact that I did take a gap year, and during my gap year, I worked as a sterilization tech slash receptionist at a dental office. I think it is important to maintain your good grades and achieve a high DAT score, but it's also important to show diversity throughout your application um, through shadowing, working, or extracurriculars. So working at a dental office, it really proved to help me during my first year of dental school because I was already familiar with terms um, like dental anatomy and terminology that some other dental students didn't have coming in. I also attended um, pre-dental events at my undergrad. For example, there was an event where a panel of current OHSU students 
came to OSU to answer questions about the school. So going to those pre-dental events is a great way to network with people who are already uh, enrolled in the school and to just try to get your foot in the door. OHSU is an open file interview, so that means the interviewers had already had the chance to look through your application. They know your grades, they know your DAT score, they know all your academics, um, but they just want to know you more as a person. I would also say be sure to know what you wrote on your application. Um, for example, I had withdrew from one of my courses in undergrad and during one of my interviews, they had asked me about why I decided to do so. So just be prepared to answer those questions and justify for anything that you had written on your application. Um, compared to other interviews that I've had, OHSU was very easygoing. The interviewers were both very nice and they made it seem as if it was a normal conversation more than an interview. Um, they just want to get to know you as a person, not what an ideal dental applicant looks like. And so don't feel like you have to mold your answers in order to fit what an ideal response would be. Just answer honestly and be true to yourself. As cliche as it may be, I would say the biggest tip for someone applying to dental school would be to just be yourself. Um, also practice, practice, practice. It is good to gather your thoughts ahead of time, especially for generic questions that you know they're going to ask you, like, why do you want to be a dentist? Why do you want to go here? Um, for me, I made a Google Doc with all of those um, commonly asked questions, and then I wrote an outline of how I would want to respond or topics, key points that I would want to include in my response. And I would practice in front of um, my friends, family, or even in front of a mirror. You, you don't want to memorize your answers, but you also want it to sound natural and flow um, so you don't get, uh, it doesn't fluster you when you answer. The main reason why I did decide on OHSU is because of the cost. Um, I am from Oregon, so I do have in-state tuition, which is about $48,000 per year compared to out-of-state, which is about $78,000 a year, and that's just tuition on its own. Um, I commute from home, so I save a lot from living expenses, and that prevents me from taking out um, a lot of loans. Um, another reason is the smaller class size. I know compared to like NYU, which is like 400 students or so, OHSU is around 70 to 75 students per, per cohort. Um, and I feel like we definitely have a lot more time to spend with our faculty members if we do need help, especially in sim clinic. And another reason is because we have a um, pass or no pass grading system, which definitely relieves a lot of stress when it comes to studying for exams. So since I did take a gap year, I felt like the transition from working eight hour shifts to studying for eight hours, it definitely was hard for me to just get back into the hang of things. Um, but they definitely worked us into the course load. We had a six week summer term um, prior to our fall term of first year where we only took two courses. We took dental anatomy and um, a social justice course. And so they definitely worked your way into the heavier course load during fall. So first year, it was mainly didactic courses, getting the foundational knowledge of um, anatomy, physiology, and histology. We also took classes like um, dental materials, uh, public health, interprofessional education. Um, during first year, we were probably in some clinic like two times a week, we took occlusion and then we had a restoration course. Um, most days we would begin at 8 a.m. and end at 5 p.m., but not every day of the week. It depends on the class. Um, some courses were distance learning and other courses were in person. Um, even as a second year, we do have some distance courses now, but for the most part, everything is in person. Um, as a first year, you also get to have some clinic time so you can assist the third and fourth years. And I feel like having that early experience in actual clinic and 
making those connections with patients definitely helps when you get your own patients during your last two years. Um, the second year is the hardest year from what I've heard from my upperclassmen friends. It's a lot of didactic work, but also a lot of clinical work. We're currently taking a sim clinic competency course, and it's pretty much a class where you do just preps and restorations. Um, and it just makes sure that you are ready to work on real patients. Um, as for free time, I try to go to the gym at least four or five times a week. Um, going to the gym really wasn't my priority prior to dental school, but now that I am in class most of the time, I feel like I look forward to going to the gym because for me, it's like my one hour break from studying. And I feel like it was definitely hard for me to find that work-life balance as a first year student because I felt like I had to have my head in the books all the time um, in order to pass my exams, but I felt like that became very mentally draining um, to do that. So I feel like it's really important to find that balance, make time to hang out with your friends, do your hobbies, work out, just do something that's non-dental related and then study and then go back to it. What makes me most excited about coming to school is probably my classmates and instructors. Um, because our class size is so small compared to many of the other schools, we are able to make those personal connections with one another and the instructors, and it just promotes a more uh, familial environment compared to a competitive one. We're, we're like a family and we're always looking out for one another. I also look forward to the view that we get from sim clinic so i'm in one of the study rooms right now but this is pretty much what we see and i feel like it's very calming especially when i feel frustrated with a preparation or restoration um, it's always chaotic in sim clinic and so just looking outside at the view of portland um, makes me feel more at ease My biggest piece of advice for pre-dental students is to come into school with an open mind. I don't know how many of you are like this, but I definitely had a perfectionist mindset. Um, growing up in an Asian household, anything below a 90 is failing. And so when I transitioned to dental school where passing was anything above a 70, I had to ask myself, like, is this actually good enough? And there were a lot of times where I was really hard on myself when it comes to uh, hand skills, I would compare myself to other students who would finish within like 30 minutes and I took the whole class period. Um, I just had to learn that this is what dental school is for. This is the time to learn, it's the time to make mistakes, and you're going to be amazed by how much you can grow within the four years that you're here. Again, my name is Valerie. If you have any other questions about dental school, OHSU, or anything in general, or if you just want to connect, um, my Instagram is Valerie underscore TEA, and my email is ValerieHTai at gmail.com. Um, thank you, Future DDS, for having me, and I hope to see some of you at OHSU in the upcoming years.